Uh, Welcome to another episode I'm gonna go get another of Black Pack Homestead. You I see this hat? Yeah. What's my hat? It's your rabbit harvester hat. It's my rabbit harvester. You know that if you watch the videos. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> Ago. and so this will be our second harvest and it is met with the same butterflies in our stomachs just like the first time because it's just a big serious situation when you take a life don't you think yes so it's so, never never a happy day no, it's not. I mean, you know, you think that people who harvest their own meat are all, you know, hard and rawr. But it's, it just really makes you understand, even if you buy it at the grocery store, you know, that that animal lived and ate and grew up just so you could survive. And when you do that yourself, and you see all of the life stages and then the day comes to harvest and it's hard it's really hard i mean when you watch the video that you're going to see after this it may not seem like it's hard for us to do but when i'm carrying that rabbit from the rabbit hat up to the area where we harvest them I'm talking to that rabbit, I'm praying over that rabbit, I'm thanking that rabbit for its life, saying, dude, I know this wasn't your choice, but if we weren't raising meat rabbits, he would have never been. So, you have anything to add? Nope, nope, enjoy the video. Let's get to it. I'm over here loving on the bunny. Whenever it was looking me. That's the sign of trust right there. Yep. Agreed. Where you boy? All right. Guys. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, bunny. I know it wasn't your choice. Thank you. Come us. You've been such a good bunny, large. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Come here, medium. You got a big old. Bunny. Our bunny's coming small, oh, medium. This one that one's got some fur on him. It's yeah. got like a. The big gray patches. Yeah, that was the one that the littlest one was the one that's silvering out yeah. so much, and that's the littlest one. Thank you, Bunny. That one? <laughs> yeah. That one's fixing to get bred. Yep, they're gonna uh, breed. It's breeding season. Well, she's All right, all right large. All right, we're gonna say our prayers yep. before we get started on this. <laughs> yep, that's why. Um, Which one's large? I'm guessing. Up. All right, close up. The largest one, yes. Yep. Alright, let's go for your small, medium, medium, and large medium. much. Okay, so when you go to dispatch a rabbit, there are several methods that you can use. But the method that we prefer is called the broomstick method. And you take your broomstick and you lay it on the ground. And after you lay it on the ground, you have to be very careful when you're carrying the rabbit over to, to do this because it's very important that you get their front legs pinned underneath them or it won't be a quick kill. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put one foot on one side of the broomstick as you, and it's good to have two people so one person can stand on it while the other one slides the rabbit under. And you pick up this side of the stick and you slide his head under making sure that his front legs are back and then when you have the, the broomstick on his neck, you stand on both sides all your weight and you reach down and you grab his hind legs and you pull straight up. And it's not like super hard to do, 
it happens pretty quick you'll feel one click and then a bigger click and the rabbit will like all of a sudden be longer than he was so let's go get another bunny and we'll show you how it's done <laughs> hello the bunny bunny come here babies come on So when you put the rabbit underneath the broomstick, you need to make sure that his four legs are held back like this. Okay, that's the most important step, is to hold his front legs with your hands. See, there's the front legs, hold it like that. Okay, and that way you don't get a leg trapped under the head and it's not pretty when that happens. Okay, so let's lay him down. Good bunny. Okay, now that we've dispatched the rabbit, the next step is to hang them up as we have him hung here and to remove the head, which we did over there. The next thing you gotta do is you gotta wet that fur down because you don't, if you don't, then you have tons and tons and tons of fur all over your meat and it's a pain in the rear to get off. So let's hose this rabbit down. A lot of people will use butchering knives and all sorts of different knives. I'll just go with my Leatherman or multi-tool. It's made by Snap-on. So the very first step that you're going to do is you're going to skin the rabbit. And we're going to start by making little cuts right around here, right under his little heel, right here, okay? And the way you do that is you just gently... Just through the skin. Just through the skin, gently, gently. Now let me part this fur so I can see the skin. Gently just begin to slice. And you're not cutting the foot, right? No. You're just cutting the top layer of the skin. And once you get the little hole made, then you begin to take the skin out from around the leg. through that tendon and seeing the fur it just pulls right off and if you look right there is the tendon you can see it better on this leg that's the tendon that you don't want to cut right there so then we repeat the process connective tissue in there and you just break it with your fingers like that and then you can continue your sloth <laughs> Poop. There we go. 
Now, you cut above the bum hole. That's the bum hole right there where the poop is. And you grab the tail and you just cut. That might be better. Do it. Cut no. It off. The rabbit I'm skinning. Okay. There, there we go. go. Good job. Can you hold that? preserving these pelts so from here they go in a bucket of cold water and on another video we'll teach you how to preserve and tan your own rabbit hides so when you dunk it down in the bucket with the other pelt and there you go all right so now the next step is to Carefully open up the abdominal cavity. What? Oh, and so when you do this, there's a lot of organs in here, a lot of structures, so you need to once again be careful. And what I do is I pinch the meat in the belly up like this. I know a lot of people say not to use the point of your knife, so I'm going to try not to use the point of my knife. That's what I usually do. But say so then you just gently slice, just like we did on the ankles, till the cavity opens. We're almost there. Okay. And see that's a little bit of the bladder popping through. So then to get, make my cup further, I'm going to get my pinch back. I'm going to slide my knife. I know I shouldn't be cutting toward my hand. I have terrible knife skills. Now I should be able to get my finger in there and hold it apart like this and just gently slice, 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 slice. Holding the meat away to not puncture them so we don't taint our hard earned meat. cavity opened this is the intestine he had some gas look at that gas he had this guy had tummy troubles the other day and that's gas in his intestinal tract right there some good-looking healthy intestines so I'm gonna gently let those hang while I grab the bladder that's the bladder and to get the bladder the way I do it as I just grab it and make sure all the urine is down in the bottom and I just pull straight down if it will work. There we go, connective tissue, and there's the bladder. Okay. Now then the next portion I like to do next is a lot of people try to pull this intestine out all through with the with the uh um We're not saving the heart and heart liver. Why not? Because it's in that bag. Alright. And so what I do is I take the poop because I don't like to not feed my rabbits the night before 
because I think it's cruel. So then I just take the poop and I push it back down into the intestinal tract. And I reach up in there to make sure there's no more. And I keep pushing it. And then you just pull straight down. the gallbladder if you save the liver be very careful when you remove the gallbladder so you don't rupture it so you don't taint the liver and how you do that is you just gently grab it here and hold it closed much like you did the bladder except I dropped it and then gently pull it away from the liver like that and then just break that off gallbladder in the trash there you go it's a nice liver all right, now into the thoracic cavity. A little bit of residual liver. And this is the thoracic cavity. This is the diaphragm. We all have diaphragms if you breathe air. And so then you just break the diaphragm with your fingers like that. thing to do when before you do the the butthole is to break and I usually have to have Chris do this for me because I have a hard time breaking it. Can yeah, you break after, him? If you cut up one side, it'll get a lot easier. Alright. Yep, cut right down the yep. Okay, let me break him. There you go. Okay that allows you more access in between the legs to the pelvis so you're so when you're removing the bum hole it um is easier to do okay back to where i was cutting to me this is probably the most tedious part is this part because i always think lord don't put it into an ethyl Oh, wait a minute, I'm going to see something. That's a girl. This one is a girl. Okay, well, I didn't take the other one. And this is medium. Medium was a girl. So those, both of those big ones were a girl. Right down the middle, that's what I'm talking about. How can you tell if it's a girl or not? Because um, the girls will have a taco and the okay, boys look, will have Okay, look, when a... you pull that back, there's see how that looks like a taco? There's no penis coming there's out. There's no it. penis coming I... out. The penis is circular with a hole in the middle, and that is, looks like a taco, so it's a girl. And also, I didn't see any testicles, so it's a girl. Step, which is to cut it off. Hey, look, Chris, here these are. No, I brought them down. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> you asked me to, you told me I'm where they were. I'm not get... There's a hanging piece. Okay, you got that on film, right? Let's see if it hits it. 
<laughs> oh, there was a hanging piece. So in this part, you should probably just have music in the background while you do it. Cut off all the... Yeah. All right. And the last and final step, when you're done with your rabbit, is to cut the back feet off. Got the decent, the decent clips. Can you hold the rabbit? Yep. It's going to take me two hands. Oh crap. You see what I got the lobbers? Don't break his legs. Nope. There, everything we have we'll is Get the dull. other one and then we'll cut him free. Oh, yep, smart man. And so you. Oh, yeah, thank you. You cut right below its little foot, right where you started your cut. When you skinned it. And there you go. And then you dissect her. You're gonna have to yeah, hold it. Know, it's gonna fall. Gonna... And then you just dissect it around. And at this point, you can cut the tendon. Yeah. Because you're not hanging up anymore. You're done. Don't cut toward, uh, toward yourself. Oh God, I know. I have terrible knife. Let the knife do the work. I'm trying, but uh can't let the knot, I do better letting the knife do the work when I do it the other way. Alright. Here we go. Put him in the cooler. Two rabbits down, one to go. So, does anybody want to dispatch it or? Uh, don't know how to yet. Alright, we'll so. We'll, do this we'll have Uncle Chris do it first. Okay, first you gotta hold their four legs back. You don't want to talk. Puppies, no. Hush. That was quick. Hard. Oh, there's the nerves. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, buddy. Thank you, buddy. That was quick. Oh, yep. Mark. All right. Step two. You take and cut the skin around the feet and then you reach through and you loosen the skin. We'll demonstrate how that works. My name is Levi Ogden. 
I'm gonna be a special guest on Black Pack Homesteading. And what we're gonna do here is uh, harvest a rabbit. See, there's different methods of killing a rabbit. This is gonna be my first time. And we're gonna use the broomstick method. So what happens is, if you bring him over here, I'm gonna step. You, little guy. Thank you so much for your life. You've been a good bunny. One bad day, that's all you're gonna have. One bad day. Hey, baby. It wasn't. It wasn't as hard as. No, no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't as hard. Yes. A little nervous. Did it make you a little nervous at first? Uh, no. It actually, when I, I wasn't nervous at all. Because you looked very what dedicated. Kinda, what kind of looked or it felt weird was when I put my uh, my foot down on the uh, the thing and I put my other foot on the other one. It's on a hill and Hold I went. Yeah. <laughs> it's on a hill. And so when I reached back, I was like. Dang, this is gonna be hard because I gotta like reach back and not fall yes. over myself. Yeah. And so when I, but pulling up was fine. Don't give me crap about gravity again. <laughs> uh, the day made me feel like uh, I really appreciate where my food comes from, all the work that goes into it, and uh, yeah, it's it's always a bittersweet day. So it's one of those things that if you're gonna raise your own meat, I mean. They're not pets, guys. You got to make that decision as to, you know, if it's a pet or if it's your food or not. You mm -hmm. know, so uh, I just don't name. Them. We actually talked about that. We don't yeah. name our animals, but we'll name them by certain traits or sizes. You know, we don't, you know, start giving them names the second they're born. Like they develop names over time based on their traits or the way they act. In our first litter, we had Journey because Journey kept journeying out of the nest box. We had Gold Crown because he had a gold crown. And in this litter, since we only had three, we had small, medium, and large because they were small, medium, and large rabbits. So, so in essence, we do name them, you know, but we don't do it on purpose, I guess. Yeah. You know, so we hope that you learned something today. We just make reference to, you know, in case one of them gets sick. Yeah. Yeah, something's going on with mid size. With, with, <laughs> with me, something's going on with, and there was something going on with medium. Yeah, medium had mediums a little diarrhea. Have problems, so. so we, you know, took care of medium. Medium was fine, and medium, you know, was all right. But we knew which rabbit we were talking about. We also called them the of Guinevere or the of Quicksilver because that's their mom. You know, if we got two litters going, then you know which litters, you know, we're talking about. We'll so they do have names, but not like we sit there and ponder what we should name our rabbits. It just sort of happens organically. Yes, correct. And, uh, but our nephew, who you saw in the video, um, was talking about how it's like, to him, disrespectful to not name your animals. And I, said, and I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, all right, I kind of see where you're coming from. But we kind of do name our animals. It's just more of an organic process. Yeah. After everything's processed, I don't want to know this was medium. <laughs> yeah. Okay then. So we hope that you enjoyed um, this video of harvesting and or, of harvesting our rabbits. This time we showed you everything. We explained everything. Um, we hope that you enjoy it. We hope that you learned something. We hope that. If you haven't subscribed already, that you'll reach over and you'll click that subscribe button because it's very important to us creators and like, share our videos on all your social media if you think some of your friends might enjoy our videos as well. Even if they don't, you don't think they'll enjoy it, share, they might get into it. It'd be a good thing. And so thank you for watching. Thank you for everything because without you we wouldn't be we wouldn't be doing this because we do it for you guys man we do it for y'all so um thanks for watching do you have anything to add i hope you enjoyed hair today gone tomorrow see you here next time at the black pack homestead oh bye bye
bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me. 